Hello folks, it's Bill Swift from Swift Canoe and Kayak and we are here at our Oxtongue Lake store where our test paddling center is. And we're gonna show you today our beautiful Cruiser 15.8. We're gonna put it in the water and have a little bit of fun also. So the shape of this boat, we'll start with David Yost, our designer who's incredible. Very rounded in the chine area. Nice, brings the roundness up nicely. There's a little bit of tuck way up near the top and you see it a little bit more and more as it goes on. And he's really brought the sides in real nicely. So when you're paddling, you paddle right next to the side of the boat. This boat for an average size or larger person is a tremendous day paddling boat. A great tripper if you want to put a little bit of gear in it. I'm 6'4", about 230. This is a great boat for my size for day cruising. I absolutely love it. I use the Cruiser 16.8 more just because I have one and it's convenient, but this is actually the ideal size for me for day paddling. Very, very seaworthy shape with the, the roundness to the hull, with the flare to the shape. It really pushes waves off to the side and away from the boat. Much straighter keeled in the back end. A little bit rocker upwards curvature in the bottom in the front. So it really tracks nicely, especially with a kayak paddle. This particular Cruiser 15.8 is in the Kevlar Fusion laminate. It's in the ruby red finish, and you can see it's got this translucent look to it. It's got the black and gold Kevlar on the inside. The gunnel of it is actually for 2022 moving forward, black with a little bit of gold in it, which this one isn't. This is a 2021. This is a carbon end cap with a hole in the end to allow water to drain out when you're not using it. Now the cruisers come standard with our adjustable kayak foot braces and they're so easy to adjust. So you just set them to the right position while you're out paddling, it's very easy to move them where you want to. They also come standard with cherry handles and thwarts. This particular one has the carbon tech package, which has the carbon handles and thwarts, makes it a little bit lighter and makes it completely maintenance free. Now this guy's got the cherry detachable yoke right at the exact balance position. We inset pins right into the gunnel system on all our solos and pack boats. This weighs about two and a half pounds. You can also order a sassafras yoke, weighs about a pound and a half, or get one with all carbon, which weighs about a pound and a half also. Some people love the look of the carbon. It matches everything. This is our beautiful seizing system that when you go to use it, you clip it in right in here. And make sure when you put it up, folks, you don't crank down on the back strap. You leave it, leave it loose so the seat has play to it. Adjustable lumbar support. The seat system moves with you beautifully. Very heavily padded. Tremendous amount of comfort in these boats. We hear it time and time again from people. This particular seating system is the most comfortable in the pack boat industry. Now, when you're not using it, you finish paddling, it's very easy to unclip, put it onto the one directly connected to the seat and voila, you're ready to go. Lots of room in the back of the Cruiser 15.8 to put a bigger backpack if you are tripping. I like to split the weight when I do that. I'll put the bigger pack in the right here and put a dry bag in the back and the top of the pack that I can put in front of me to balance the weight out nicely. Now it's a beautiful day today. It's lightly raining. And you know what folks? It happens sometimes when you go paddling and you roll with it. So we're doing that today. Let's take a look at this baby over here. This is another Cruiser 15.8, and I've got this one set up. This is our test paddling boat here at Algonquin. This is how I like to set it up for day paddling. So this is another ruby one. This one actually has the champagne two-tone finish 
which does tend to hide the scratches a lot. On the Cruiser 15A, that'll add maybe two pounds to the weight of the boat. This one's got the cherry detachable yoke on it. Now, I like to lash my paddles when I'm doing portages, and I tend to do a lot of traveling with these boats where I do portages. Here in Ontario, you do one or two portages, and you really get away from more and more people and go deeper into the woods. My gal and I last night did a great trip. We did a three kilometer portage. We heard and saw some baby herons in a nest in a big rookery. We saw the three smallest little herring gulls I've ever seen, these little babies, with the herring scaring the loons away from them. We saw two otters swimming across a lake. It was beautiful. To me, that's what life in a boat is all about. Paddle where you can. If you can do a carry, you get away from more people. So here's the paddles I like to use. I always take both a kayak paddle and a canoe paddle. And I love the adjustable paddles from Werner where you can adjust the length and the angle of the paddle just with one click of the lever. Bending branches also makes an excellent adjustable paddle as well. I've just been using the Werner for years. I'm used to it. I've just finished paddling and I'm setting up for a portage. So what I do is I get the kayak paddle under the thwarts, clip it together, and I have these strings set up where I can tie the paddle in real quickly. Now, other people use bungee cords. I've seen people use Velcro straps. Use whatever you like. I grew up in a camp where we use this string. It's very strong P cord, it's called. And it's just because I'm used to it. And all I do is tie a quick square knot. Doesn't need to be super tight, but you want it to be held in place. Now, I also like taking a short bench shaft canoe paddle. And it's not long enough for me to tie it at both ends. So what I do is I tuck it under one side and I just tie the handle on. And because the yoke is there, the thwart's there, it's gonna be held in place. I always take a day pack with me, carry some food, some safety equipment, water bottle. So whether I'm out for the day or out for a trip, nice to have something just to bring along. And since it's such a beautiful day, why don't we do a little portage? So I'm gonna flip this up. Now these boats are so light, these pack canoes, that many people will carry the boat and a pack at the same time. So a lot of people are doing portages in one carry that are solo paddling with our lightweight canoes and pack boats. What I like about this boat is the thwarts right here. I can hold on to it. I can hold on to the gunnel if I want to. This is such a comfortable setup with this contoured carrying yoke. We do have a nice pad also if you're doing long portages or carries where you can Velcro a pad right to the yoke, which makes it even more comfortable. When you unflip the boat, you want to keep your hands right in the middle. So if you put your hands off to the side, one end can hit hard down on the ground. So when I finish a trail, the first thing I usually do, unscrew the yoke. And I've gotten in the habit of doing them both at the same time, so you get it off more quickly. And tucking it in right next to the seat is a great place for it while you're out paddling. Then I'll undo my paddles. Get the canoe paddle right in front, ready to go. Let's get the kayak paddle out. Now, depending on the day, you want to get the bugs off you or you want to put suntan lotion on, get yourself ready to do some more paddling. So I always set the seat up right away. Get it ready to roll. And again, I'm not tightening this strap tight. I'm keeping it loose. And a lot of folks ask us, 
how to get in and out of the boat from different situations. So we're going to show you a shore put in right here today. These boats travel so fast, folks, they try to leave without you. So I'm going to take my day pack off. Now, I love putting a water bottle right next to me in the boat, right there. Can get at it quickly. Put the pack right behind me. So I'm going to use the paddle as a leverage point to get in and out of here. So here's a pointer I'd like to show people that the blade itself, if I leave it like this with the curves, the rounded side down, it can slide. If I turn it, I can actually grip a little bit with the end of the paddle so it doesn't slip as much. So I picked a spot here that has a little bit of mud and some roots on it. Now note how I'm putting one hand on the thwart and the handle and the paddle here. And I'm going to put weight on the paddle. I tend to try to clean my shoes off when I get in. Going to slide in. Now, if you don't get your button far enough in front of the seat, sometimes you can pull the adjustable lumbar support off so you can readjust it. Now, I'm in a particular spot here where I'm still partially on land, and that's fine. You can just slowly slide the paddle down a little bit. And what I always do, adjust the foot brace to the proper position before you go anywhere. I really like keeping my knees bent. So I find the more bend you get to it, the better. If you keep your legs really flat, you tend to get your muscles, your ligaments, tendons will actually get tired more quickly. I'm feeling really good here, really secure. So once I get to that point, I wiggle the boat around. You can use the paddle as a leverage point. Hold on to the shore while you're first getting used to it. So the David Yost designs do have a little bit of roundness to the shallow arch. So they are designed to have a bit of play to them. Most people use a kayak paddle that use our cruiser series. I'd say 98% of the people. So what I like to get people used to doing right away are strokes to move the boat sideways. It's very easy to learn how to get a boat going in a straight line. Actually maneuvering the boat back and forth what takes people more time. And so what I'm going to show you right now is what's called a sculling stroke, where I've got my upper arm way up and I can pull right over towards you. So I'm going to push away again. Here's one thing that's real important with the stroke, guys. Keep the stroke in front of you. Don't do it right at your body. You can actually hit yourself right in the head. If you keep the stroke right out in front of you, it's a super comfortable position. The more you keep your upper arm up, I'll do it sideways to you now. The more you keep the upper arm up, the more you can move the boat. If your upper arm's down, you don't have as much leverage. Now, another thing that's real important to learn right away is how to turn the boat just with a sweep stroke. So a sweep strokes when you reach as far out as you can and just move the boat sideways like that. When I do lessons, I get people to also choke way up on the paddle and get them to do it. And you can see because you're getting the paddle blade out further, the lever, you can move the boat even further. And something fun that's just fun to try when you're hacking around, put one hand on the end of the blade and look how much you can turn the boat just with one stroke so it just it helps you improve your skills in the future if you know these things so paddling this cruiser this is one of my favorite boats to paddle these cruisers are so efficient they're designed that when you take a stroke they accelerate nicely and they keep moving into the next stroke so i'm just going to lightly start out here and I'm going to show you 
just how quickly take a stroke. I'm very lightly paddling right now. Folks, I didn't talk about this at the beginning. I like to offset my paddle to 30 degrees. And then with these lever lock paddles, I can adjust the length of it. The more I lengthen it out for me, this is a 260 to 280 adjustable, the less water I find comes in the boat. Now, I'm gonna just build a little momentum up here and come right at you and note how I try to push my upper arm straight forward, right at about chin level. This is such a sleek moving boat in the water. Okay, folks, I want you to see this from the side where I really rotate my whole upper body. I'm extending my top arm out. The more you get your body into the boat, the more length your stroke has to it and the greater efficiency you can achieve. And it's not important that you're fast, but it's important that you make it easier to get from point A to point B, so you can either paddle longer or go further, whichever you want to. Now I'm gonna do a, what's called a cross ball stroke here. And I'm leaning to the outside of the turn, which is helping me come around very quickly. Now I wanna show you one of my favorite things to show people. And that is how to control the direction of the boat by leaning. So I'm gonna keep my stroke normal and I'm gonna lean the boat to the left as I get a little speed up here. So I'm gonna start leaning left now and watch what happens. The boat will lean right. Now look how I can brace my leg right on the side of the boat here while I'm doing this. The more you lean, the more the boat will turn. And what's so cool about this is you really learn how to control the direction of the boat just with subtle lean turns without actually adjusting the stroke itself. So if I'm out paddling and I feel like the wind's really blowing me one way or the other, I can just by leaning the boat compensate for a lot of that. So let's try it one more. This is a shorter distance. I'm going to get a little speed up and let's lean it right this time. I'm going to put my leg on the side and these cruisers you can really lean way over. So look at this turn I can cut by not adjusting my stroke a whole lot. Yahoo! It's really fun when you get in a real windy, twisty stream. You can really get these boats to do pretty snappy turns. And it, it's fun. You, now, one thing that's important with it when you're doing these lean turns, the boat has a habit of continuing the turn even after you bring the boat down flat again. So you need to learn how to bring it down before the turn is actually finished and the momentum of it will actually carry it through a little bit more. Now, such a beautiful sunny day here today. I'm gonna to come in though. So let me show you how I would like to land the boat just on a, a shore situation. So I'm gonna come right in. As I get in, water's nice and clear here. I can see if there's rocks or not. So what I like to do is this. I like to pull in with the paddle, use this as a grip. So I pulled the boat up and what I'm gonna do now, I feel pretty steady. I'm going to get out the opposite way that I got in and note how I put the paddle blade down where it's gripping. If I put it down on the round side again, I find there's situations where it can slip out. By putting it where I can grip on it, I'm putting both hands behind me on the paddle and the thwart, pushing up, and I can slowly get right out. Always lean in. You don't want to lean out. You can have some not fun circumstance happen. Now, I'm going to get back in again, and we're going to use the canoe paddle this time. 
So how do I do that with a canoe paddle? It's so short. Well, take a look at this. You can do the same technique. I've got the grippy side down. Oh, remember, I'm gonna wash my feet a little bit. Get in, wash your feet a little bit if you can. Respect the inside of your boat. So now I'm in, gonna readjust my foot braces, make sure they're just where I want them. Now I've got a canoe paddle. So my tail is on something behind me. I'm just gonna scooch off a little bit. Make sure I get used to the boat again. Now, if you are going to use a canoe paddle in these cruisers, you wanna use a shorter one. This is a 50. If I'm in a tandem canoe, I'm using a 54, but because you're sitting lower in the boat, you want a shorter shaft length of the paddle. Otherwise your upper arm's gonna be way up in the air. So let me show you some quick strokes with the canoe paddle here. You can do a modify C stroke, native stroke where you turn the paddle if you want to. I like getting speed up and switching sides every four or five strokes. And these blades are so short it's very easy to do so. So these boats are so much fun. So now I'm going to do a quick cross draw. And note how I've got my upper arm way up, way out. I don't want to do it close to my body. The further away from your body you get it, the more impact you're going to have on turning the boat. So let me show you here. You actually weave a little bit as you paddle. So from side to side, when you're using a canoe, a bench shaft paddle. Now I can use the same lean stroke. So I'm gonna lean it way over and do a bit of a sweep stroke while I do this. And I can cut a very quick turn. And I'll do a cross draw again. And the key to this is I'm keeping my upper arm way up. Try to keep your arms pretty straight. Rotate like the kayak stroke. Rotate your body as much as you can to really get a long stroke. I'll lean it left now. And look how much I can turn this boat in such a short time period. Beautiful. So this Cruiser 15.8 is really fun to paddle. We've been selling it to adventure racers, people like fast cruising boats, but because of the seating position and the comfort of it, it's great for other things. Taking a grandchild, fishing. It's so stable when you're like this. It has so many uses. So the Cruiser 15.8, Great choice, average size to bigger person. This is a boat that you will absolutely love. Cheers.